episode to the YouTube channel. We are here today to start season two of Waterloo Road. Twelve episodes this season, an increase of four, obviously with the main storyline of season one and season two sort of connecting. The twenty episodes are sort of a continuation story, but there's a lot of new stuff introduced in this. I'm going to talk about why not a lot of it makes sense after how the last season ended, and I feel like they just sort of. <clears throat> Got on a bit of a tangent in some place in this episode. So, of course, subscribe if you're new. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And spoilers ahead. Enjoy. So, of course, the first big thing, the major thing, Roger Aspinall is here as the sponsor for Waterloo Road. Wanted to create the Roger Academy School. Um, he wants to see, you know, what the pupils are doing, what the scores are, who will the head teacher be, who will the teachers be. <clears throat> And that was sort of the outline of the episode. You know, there was things going on within the episode, but his outcome was to meet every teacher. You know, he was a bit off. <clears throat> um, it, it was very friendly with Rimmer to an extent, but obviously because his job is not secure for some reason. Um, he, he survived the first term. He's, the re he's one of the main reasons why they kept the school open. And then all of a sudden, the sponsors come out of nowhere. Rimmer's job's not secure. Estelle no longer works there, which makes absolutely no sense after the last season. It was almost concrete that um, she was like, I wouldn't want to work for anyone but you. And now she's gone. And there was a 10 pin. And then um, the Vienna got introduced later in the episode. But I'll talk, talk about her in a, in a little bit. But uh, I think Roger's introduction was random. Like, where did this sponsor come from? They've literally just survived a closure. And then a sponsor come out of nowhere. As I said, he's treading on eggshells this entire episode. He becomes very good allies and friends with Trenman, as you'd expect, because they're sort of along the line, same lines, you know, rich, powerful, intelligent, intellectual, all those things. Kim is an art teacher, so it doesn't fit Roger's books, apparently, according to his reactions. He used to be taught by Grantley and did not appreciate how he used to speak to him or treat him, especially when he had dyslexia. And of course, he obviously fell asleep in class. He's obviously not very fond of the, of um, Roger's son, Brett, because he's a bit of a smart ass and obviously he drew on his head. And you can see he was going through every member of staff. He didn't come across staff, but I can't see staff being in the future of his plans, you know, realistically. Um, obviously, by the end of the episode, we know he does get rid of Jack as well as the board. They all came to a an, 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 uh, unanimous agreement. And Trenman obviously... It's kind of crazy how they, because, like I said, Trenman was very much the only one all for Roger. And you could basically see as the episode went on, he would become headmaster by the end of the episode. You know, it's made things awkward between him and Jack. They had a bit of a row at the end of the episode. It made things between him and, and Kim awkward, even though Andrew was very calm, clear on how Kim was feeling. But yet he still took the job for his... um. So he because he put the, the the interest of the school at heart, but then you've got to reflect on this. He's only got a job because Rimmer had faith in him, and he gave him multiple chances. So the fact of him to take on the headmastership is kind of a dick move, but of course it's going to be resolved at some point when obviously Roger starts targeting Kim and whatnot. Um, like I said, I think with Davina's introduction, it's a bit. It was very sexist the way she was introduced. Uh, Rimmer took one look at him and was like, uh huh, you're hot. You're obviously not a secretary type woman because obviously he's dealt with Estelle for so long. He's dealt with a woman who's old, out, you know, someone he would never look at. He obviously looks at Davina in a different way. His first glances and looks said a lot about it. And then when he came back into the office and everything was moved and cleaned up, it sort of surprised him. And you can see there's going to be more with them too, and I believe I think there is. It's been it's been a while. I remember Lorna uh, Davina's character, but um, I can't remember how much of an interaction with Jack she does have down the line. Obviously, because Jack does stay his head. I think at some. I can't remember when he got. I can't remember because he's the headmaster for season two, <clears throat> but again, um, he's currently only deputy. So uh, I'm intrigued to see how it all pans out. Brett, Meek, and um. Her name is Lorraine, Leanne. Leanne, they are sort of in this like triangle. Brett and Meek were very close. Leanne kept trying to get involved. And then a spiral of things from, you know, hanging out in Brett's den to basically spiking Meek's drink uh, so she would get over drunk, um, revealing her cleavage. And obviously now Leanne has so much leverage over her because if you're a kid and you're going to school and someone's going to picture 
of your boobs. It's going to be one of those things. It's like you literally, she literally won't be able to move on Brett now without Leanne doing anything. And you can see from next time, it obviously will escalate. And again, I'm glad Mika's at the center of attention. But again, it goes back to the same thing. And I know she, I know she didn't go there to expect anything to happen. But she knew Leanne was not happy with what was happening with Brett. She knew she was getting jealous. She knew she would probably find a way to invite herself. And again, it's not the same as the Chloe and Dante situation. But the clo- um, the kids of Izzy seem to find a way to get themselves in scenarios that are just really stupid. Chloe in the limousine in season one, episode one. Mika in episode one of season two, she managed to get herself into a scenario that has put herself in a very vulnerable position because now Leanne has a picture. Brett does care about Mika, but it's all going to go one way or another for either of them. So I'm intrigued to see where that storyline goes. Obviously, Lorna comes back from the dead as she attempted to commit suicide. Uh, I, I feel she should have been written out, but because all her mind games were playing this episode, and for me, it's making Izzy look like a really bad character because she keeps she's caving into everything. Oh, can I stay at yours because my B B and B is um flooded? It's obviously not flooded. Uh, can I stay at yours for a night? I know it won't be awkward. Oh, I didn't think about that. Blah. I'll throw myself down a pair of stairs. I'll try and. I- help Mika, you know, I'll try to be civil with you, all these things, and you're thinking, no, you're talking shit, um, I'm glad Tom sees it, I'm glad, um, there's a little bit of sense there, but I think, I just, I just hate Lorna's face, every time I see her on the screen, I'm like, oh, just get off the screen, you're not a good actress, you're not a good character, you're not intriguing, you're just annoying to watch, and I think the fact that they rolled her over to season two is very annoying, so um, that's all I can say on that. You know, the storyline is here to stay and she's going to have a lot of conflict with Tom going forward, which I'm looking forward to Tom sticking it to her. But yeah, I think as overall, the uh, episode was great. It was well, um, you could tell it was very different from the original, the first season because there was a different tone. Like Tom looked, I think there must have been a bit of a difference because like, Tom looked really youngish on the younger side, a bit rougher, didn't like he cared in this episode. He looked like he cared. A lot of the teachers looked like he cared a bit more in this episode. Um, It just felt very different tone. Like I said, the sponsor coming in was very random. There's definitely changes like Estelle going and the, the tent being in. Um, So, yeah, there's a lot to uh, be excited for for season two. I'm very much uh, looking forward to getting through the episodes and obviously finishing this off by, the time, by like next week, is it? seven by i think i said next friday somewhere like that so yes very exciting times and of course um i'll keep you posted on every review this week we've got a couple of final season one videos to wrap up and get them on the channel and of course full focus on season two and then getting those little videos done after season two and then i think there will be a small break of season three as i'll be going away but don't worry, season three will return in late February. So stick around for that, of course. If you want to see any other videos on the channel, do let me know down below. And of course, check out all the other content on the channel. Let me know down below your thoughts on episode one of season two. And of course, I'll catch you in the next one. Subscribe and like, and goodbye.